Okay, I've got it ready to go. It's just a matter of getting us in position for it. So, just to give you a heads up, I am going to be reading the prelude of the Illidan book by William King. An excellent book, in my opinion. A book that added quite a bit to a very messy situation. I'll talk about a bit more about that when we get to the point where we are going to actually discuss that. So, But yes, this is the mission where we are going to actually be freeing Illidan from his prison for 10,000 years. You know, obviously that's... Uh, <laughs> well, anyways... Let's just continue. Now, right off the bat, I remember not liking this. You know why? Because there are enormous cave spiders! I sense a strange darkness tainting them. They have been transformed by a great evil. And cobalts! You not that candle! No, you not that candle! Ashterodanador. Hmm. All right, uh, let's. It shall take be a done. Uh, here, shall we? Ashterodanador. Just to be thorough. Ah. Wendigos. Press the attack. Quick, take down these cannibals before they pass on the curse. Kalimdor. What? I played until dawn. For Kalimdor. Anudora. It shall be done. Ashterodanador. Ugh, more spiders. Our warriors have engaged the enemy. For Kalimdor. Gee, thanks for letting me know. It shall be done. Ashterodanador. Oh, goody, a spider ring. Anudora. It shall be done. Ashterodanador. Oh. For Kalimdor. It shall be done. Okay. Ashterodanador. Anudora. For Kalimdor. Anudora. Demon bile. This must be what cursed the spiders. If the corruption can do this to these simple creatures, I dare not imagine what it could do to the beasts who live above. We must put an end to this corruption, no matter the cost. It shall be done. Mm. I think this is the correct way. Oh, hello, Fubbogs. Old Priestess, we need your help. Our shaman was bitten by a strange spider and has become deathly ill. Our tribesmen have run off, leaving us to fend for ourselves. What would you have us do? The waters of the nearby Fountain of Life can save him, but we dare not leave him in this state. 
If you can fill this vial with its waters and return it to us, our shaman's life will be saved. If his wisdom will prevent you from turning feral like your tribesmen, I will gladly save your shaman. <laughs> oh, so otherwise you wouldn't, Toronto, is that what you're saying? You wouldn't just be like, regardless, I would still help you. No, she's like, oh, well, uh, it'll stop you, then okay, sure. As the goddess wills. You wouldn't just be willing to help them just because? So be it. Immediately. I don't know, maybe I'm just picking on Toronto. But she kind of deserves it. This must be the fountain of life. I need only place the vial in the fountain's waters. So be it. By Elun. Has sleep dulled my senses? The goddess calls. Oh. I am prepared. Hold on. Ah, fairy fire. I heed the voice of Elun. I will try at some point to actually do the poke lines for the night elf units. Elune be praised, Priestess. Truthfully, we doubted that you'd return. Now our shaman has a chance. Whack! Again, I must thank you for your help. Take this talisman. Should you require our aid, it will summon us to fight at your side. Ooh. Talisman of the Wild. Okay. For Kalimdor. Ashterodanador. Let us continue in this strange place that apparently no one else here recognizes. The pathway cuts off to the south. But this doorway looks promising. Oh no. How could I have forgotten? What is behind this door that worries you, my love? This door leads to Illidan's prison, Tyrande. We should go. Now. Illidan? It's been 10,000 years. Could he still be alive? We should <laughs> free him. He would be the perfect ally against the undead and their demon masters. No, Tyrande. That beast must never be so <sighs> Malfurion. Is your brother. Be that as it may. He is far too dangerous. I forbid it. Only the goddess may forbid me anything. I will free <laughs> Illidan whether you like it or not. Just straight up told him, yeah, you cannot tell me that you forbid me from doing anything. It's like, that's not how this relationship works. You don't get to tell me that you forbid me from doing something. Mm-mm. <laughs> uh, but yes, this is an aspect of Malfurion's character that continues to frustrate me all the way up to Legion. Where even at the very end of Legion, where Illidan pours his heart out to him in one final farewell message, Malfurion still cannot let go of the grudge that he holds against Illidan, which is not really justified because it's his perception of it. Malfurion's view and perception of what happened is is so negative for, for him that he just he cannot let go of it. Even though Illidan is the one who reaches out to him, a hand to him and say, let's bury the hatchet. 
Malfurion never once reaches out to Illidan and offers, let's put this behind us. Let's, you know, this grudge, this hatchet, all this stuff, let's put it behind us. No, 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 no. Illidan's the one who does that. Malfurion, up even till the very end, refuses to let go of it. Even though there, are, you know, he does have that line where he's like, there are times where he fought side by side, and those were better days. But he doesn't like, you know... <laughs> Both he and Taronda's response to Illidan's farewell message in Legion really upset me. He just... He... Ugh. Yeah. I mean, he's right when he says he's dangerous, but... The reason that Illidan is called the Betrayer and why they perceive him that way is not even really justified. But anyways... Yeah, this is now where we have a separation here uh, from the two groups. We'll, we'll go back to Toronto's group later. Right now, we have to help Malfurion find the other druids down it here. It shall be done. Woo! Monstrosities! For Kalimdor. If things get hairy, I can always use this to get some fur bogs to help us out. Ashterodanador. Anudora. Something is amiss. Let me pass. The Ark Druid of the Moonglade demands passage. It shall be done. For Kalimdor. The land and I are one. Has sleep dulled my senses? Out with it. The land and I are one. It shall be done. Anudora. Ashterodanador. Turn back. You are unworthy to bask in the Bear God's presence. Bear Gods? I mean, is it really that hard to believe? I mean, we do have Ursok, who is... For Kalimdor. You know, basically a bear loa. Who was referring to the sleeping druids of the Claw. But why would he call them bear gods when they appear as I do? Something is amiss. Ashterodanador. It shall be done. Foul spawn of Deathwing. I should have known that you loathsome beasts would take refuge within the flames of the earth. Little tease for what was going to happen later. It shall be done. For Kalimdor. Ah, the druids of the Claw are awake already. Come, my brothers. We have much to do. What in the... They have lost themselves to their animal aspects. They are mindless and feral. In the raven's name. The horn's call might work but it would reach only a few of them in this part of the cavern. So... All the Druids of the Claw must survive, so we can't kill them, obviously. I think I can actually go the rest of the way with just Malfurion. Maybe. These lands. Just to be safe. The land and I are one. Ashterodanador. Anudora. Ashterodanador. For Kalimdor. Anudora. It shall be done. It ah, shall be done. Yikes. Anudora. Ashterodanador. For Kalimdor, Anudora. Oh boy. 
It shall be done. For Kalimdor. Ashterodanador. Uh... Anudora. It shall be done. Ashterodanador. For Kalimdor. Rude mother spider, Anudora. huh? It shall be done. I don't have to deal with her. I can just sneak by. For Kalimdor. Foul beast! It shall be done. Ah, he had a slow applied to him. For Kalimdor. Okay, this battle could get a little rough. Although I do have this to get a, uh... A furbog out to help. Has sleep dulled my senses? The land and I are one. Ashterodanador. It shall be done. Has sleep dulled my senses? I don't know what came over us. It's been so long since we remembered who we were. All is well, Theroshan. I have need of you and your mighty brethren once again. After these many ages, the Burning Legion has returned, and only our combined strength can drive them back. Then we druids of the Claw are yours to command, Shando Stormbridge. I cannot go back. Your quest is foolhardy. Even your goddess has condemned the one you seek to free. <laughs> Ash wow, that's hilarious that he said that. As the goddess wills. Okay. Immediately. As the goddess wills. Immediately. So be it. By Elune. By Elune. So be it. Interesting that there's a lot of these watchers here instead of wardens. Because you would think, why would Maiev lead these watchers here? As the goddess wills. To watch over Illidan's prison instead of wardens. I am. Wouldn't that make more sense? As the goddess wills. So be it. Healing wards. Immediately. As the goddess wills. Activate both to open the gate. Someone threatens Speak the wild. Speak your mind. By Elune. Immediately. So now we have Someone to make our way back the over here. To get the other one. So be it. So you know what? Because of the way this is written, I think I'm going to go ahead and start. Because the idea is that this opening portion here is taking place as Taronda is fighting her way towards the prison. So, without further ado, the prelude 
to the book World of Warcraft Illidan by William King. Six years before the fall. For those of you who are wondering, the fall is referring to when we defeat him at the Black Temple in the Burning Crusade. The ancient darkness surrounding him did not stop him from seeing any more than his lack of eyes did. He had been a sorcerer once, a very great one. His spectral sight revealed every inch of his cell, with far more clarity than eyes of flesh ever could. He could navigate this prison even without it. He knew every flagstone on the floor, every enchantment that bound him. He knew them by sight, by touch. He knew the way his footsteps would echo with every one of the nine steps it took him to pace across the chamber. He felt the flows of magic all around, spell after spell, enchantment after enchantment, their soul-crushing power intended to do only one thing, to make sure he stayed buried here, unremembered, unforgiven. The ones who incarcerated him intended this place to be his tomb. They had forgotten about him over the long millennia. They should have killed him. It would have been kinder. Instead, they let him live, pretending it was mercy. It let those who had bound him, such as his brother, Malfurion Stormrange, and Toronda Whisperwind, the woman he loved, feel better about themselves. Long centuries had dragged by when he never heard the voice of another living thing. Only his jailers, the Watchers, spoke to him occasionally, and he had learned to hate them. Most of all, he had come to abhor their leader, Warden Maiev Shadowsong. We'll be seeing her in the Frozen Throne. She visited him more than any other still afraid that he would escape despite all the precautions his captors had taken. Once, she had wanted him dead. Now, it was her task in life to ensure he stayed imprisoned, when everyone else had forgotten him. What was that? A faint tremor in the ring of binding spells? Impossible. There was no escape from this place. Not even death. Spells healed any harm he might inflict on himself. Magic kept him alive, without the need for water or food. Those bonds had been woven by masters, drawn so tight, intertwined so deeply, that they could only be undone by those who had buried him alive. And they would never do that. They were too afraid to let him go free. Justifiably so. So I'd like to imagine that when we hit that first seal just now, that's when he had the... What was that? A faint tremor? Also, that explains why he was able to survive down here for 10,000 years, because they had spells to make it where he couldn't hurt, kill himself or hurt himself through, like, actual, like, physical, because it would... He, they were spells to keep healing him, to keep him in top condition, healthy condition, plus there were spells there to make it where he didn't need food or water to keep on living. They wanted him to stay alive down here for as long as possible. So now let's continue. By Elun. As the goddess wills. So be it. Immediately. By Elun. Immediately. So be it. As the goddess wills. By Eluna. As the goddess wills. Anudora! Immediately. Nice. Okay. Back this way. It. 
by Elune. Immediately. As the goddess okay. wills. Crates. <laughs> Skeletons! They kept undead in here. As the goddess wills. Immediately. So be it. Immediately. Ooh. Now why were they being kept in here? As the goddess wills. Maybe some more sympathizers. Who knows? I heed the voice of Elune. As the goddess wills. The gate has been opened. The goddess calls. So now... He had brooded for centuries on what he would do to those who had incarcerated him. Time was the only thing he had. The span of his imprisonment dwarfed all the years he had been free. If he had not been who he was, he would have gone mad. I mean, think about it. You're stuck in a, in a solitary confinement for 10,000 years. You should not be a sane person by the time you're, you're out of there. By the time that's over. Perhaps he had. How many thousands of years had it been since he was imprisoned? He had lost track. That was the worst of it. Millennia spent in darkness, trapped in this cage, unable to take more than nine steps in any direction. He who had once hunted demons across the trackless wilderness of Azeroth had been confined in a place he would not have left an animal. They had sentenced him to this when all he had done was try to overcome their common foe. He had infiltrated the Burning Legion, his people's, no, his world's sworn enemy. He had tricked to, I'm sorry, uh, he had tried to undo the harm the demonic invaders had wreaked. Had he been rewarded for it? No. He had been buried alive. His people had assumed him to be a traitor, a betrayer. They had hailed him as a hero once, but no one did that now. If he was remembered at all, his name would be a curse. Was that the sound of weapons clashing? He pushed the, he pushed the thought aside, refused to let hope well up within his breast. There was no one out there that wanted him free. And now, let's continue. So, I'm trying to kind of, like, make this work, like, with uh, the timing of, like, how, like, Toronto's going through here, fighting, flipping the switches, which is also basically supposed to be disabling the wards and the spells that are being used on Illidan to keep him in here and keep him alive. Immediately. Which is going to explain what comes up in the in the cut, uh, upcoming cutscene, because some people would see that without the context of this book and be like, Wait, why didn't he just do that before? Why did he? How did he do that? You know, it was kind of like a huh, but fortunately, this book adds extra context as to how and why. Oh, hello there, sleepers. Immediately. Bye, Andy. Starfall. So be it. And just wait till we get to six with Malfurion and get him tranquility. By Elun. Immediately. <gasps> Death to the intruder. Oh. You need rest. Ashutoram. The goddess comes. So be it. Someone could use the wire. Immediately. Hmm. Yeah, 
that doesn't seem As all the that goddess important. wills. By Elena. So be it. By Elune. As the goddess wills. Immediately. Immediately. So be it. By Elune. As the goddess wills. As the goddess wills. Loki! Point the way. Standing God. Make it fast. I am Loki, Prince of Asgard. Keep the voice of Elune. What? The Treants move to block my path. Only a powerful druid could command such creatures. What do you think is here, Taronda? Asha Thoraman. You think Maev wouldn't have gotten some powerful druids down here to help with this prison? I am sworn to avenge. The goddess calls. Immediately. You are moved. Fair enough. Waiting on you. Why can't they go through? So Hold on. Into the wild. Make some room. There we go. Speak your mind. Ashra Thoraman. Alright, everybody heal up. Make it fast. Everybody heal up. Loki, scout for us. Some cages. More trees. Hmm. I heed the voice of Elun. Goddess calls. These explosive devices look to be of goblin design. The wily creatures must have hidden them here long ago. No matter. I'll make good use of them. No need for that. Waiting on you. You know what, Loki? Why don't you just kind of chill over here? Standing guard. Ashra Thoraman. On your mark. I heed the voice of Elune. So be it. So be it. Immediately. By Elune. the way. Speak your mind. My wait is over. The goddess calls. Your move. Someone threatens the wild. As the goddess moves. I mark. Tasha Thorama. All right, hold on. We're getting close to the prison.
His family and his friends had turned against him when he had tried to recreate the Well of Eternity, the Night Well, the the Night Elves, ancient fount of magic on Mount Hyjal. The only ones who might want him to escape were demons. His jailers would kill him rather than bleh, rather than let that happen. And as long as the wards remained in place. There was nothing he could do to stop them. But there it was again, another tremor in the flows of magic around him, the weaves of power that had bound him all this time were weakening. He raised his hands in front of his face, flexed his fingers, reached out to draw upon the magic. For the first time in millennia, something responded. A trickle so weak that he thought he might be imagining it. He called on his twin blades, the war glaives of Azanoth. They had been displayed triumphantly on weapon racks outside his cell, taunting him. But now the ancient soul bindings linking them to him caused the potent weapons to materialize in his hands. Plow power flowed through them, illuminating the runes on their blades. That is why when we reach him, he has the blades in his hands. Because people are like, why did they let him keep his weapons? They didn't. They had it on display taunting him outside the cell. But because Taronda had weakened the magical spells and wards at this point, he was able to actually call them to his hands. His heart beat faster. His mouth felt dry. There was a chance of freedom after all. He clutched the war glaives tight. In the past, they had killed demons. Now, they would kill elves. The thought did not disturb him as once it would have. He would even take pleasure in it. Again, his magical shackles flickered. The sounds of combat came closer. Some of the bindings had failed. Perhaps they were desecrated by spilled blood or ruined by the spells he sensed being unleashed in the battle. Energy poured into him as his bonds frayed. His heart pounded. His flesh tingled. He felt as if he might exhale fire. After such long abstinence, the flow of power was almost overwhelming. And now let's continue, and then we're going to let the cutscene play to the end, and then I'm going to read the rest of it for you to add extra context to the conversations in the cutscene that you're going to see uh, at the end of this mission. So... As the Goddess Wills, by Elune. So you can see, there is a powerful dryad over there. Waiting on you. I heed the voice of Elune. Califax. Hold, Priestess. This place is forbidden, even to one such as you. There is a terrible evil here that must remain chained beneath the earth. Hiladan was considered a great hero once. I believe he will become one again. Madness! You would doom us all by freeing the betrayer. Quite the opposite, in fact. I heed the voice of Elune. <laughs> Illidan, is that you? Tyrande, it is your voice. After all these ages spent in darkness, your voice is like the pure light of the moon upon my mind. The Legion has returned, Illidan. Your people have need of you once more. Because I once cared for you, Tyrande, I will hunt down the demons, but I will never owe our people anything. Then let us hurry back to the surface. The demons' corruption spreads with every second we waste. It has been an eternity, brother. An eternity spent in darkness. Illidan. You were sentenced to pay for your sins. 
Nothing more. And who are you to judge me? We fought the demons side by side, if you recall. Enough of this, both of you. What is done is done. My love, with Illidan's help, we will drive the demons back once again and save what is left of our beloved land. Have you even considered the cost, Tyrande? This betrayer's aid may doom us all before the end. I will have nothing to do with this. Okay. And now to read the rest of this for you guys. To add even, to add even more context to what you just saw. He sensed a presence outside the doorway of his cell. He prepared himself to attack. A voice spoke, and it was the last one he had expected to hear. Illidan? Is that you? Taronda whispered when asked. All of his dreams of vengeance, all of his plans for retribution, faded away, as if the long years of his imprisonment had never happened. He was astonished by the feeling, thinking himself hardened against anything and anyone, especially her. His speech was rusty after decades of disuse. Toronda? It is you. After all these ages spent in darkness, your voice is like the pure light of the moon upon my mind. He cursed himself for his weakness. These were not the words he had imagined saying in his dreams of freedom and escape. Yet they rose unbidden to his lips, hope welling in his chest. Perhaps she had seen the error of what she had done. Perhaps she had come to free him, to forgive him. The Legion has returned, Illidan. Your people have need of you once more. His fists clenched around his weapons. My people need me? My people left me to rot! His throat constricted with rage, choking off more words. The demons had returned, as he had always known they would, and his people wanted his aid. Molten anger blazed through him, creating a great void in its wake, and more power flowed in to fill the emptiness. No doubt about it, the spells binding him were weakened. By her actions, by, loose, by the loosening of her will, Taronda had helped undo them. He concentrated all of his fury and all of his pent-up frustration into one mighty spell of unraveling. For a moment, the weakened chains of magic held, but only for a moment. Rivers of power eroded the barriers around him. Slowly at first, but ever faster, the imprisoning spells crumbled. He smashed through the bars of his cell, tearing apart the stone. Taronda stood there, beautiful as ever, staring at Illidan. The years had not changed her. She was still tall, with pale violet skin and blue hair, graceful as a temple dancer, and lovely as a moonrise over Nordrasil. She reeked of blood and unleashed magic. She must have seen his rage, for she turned away, unable to meet his gaze. That hurt more than anything. To see her cringe after all the long years since, they, since last they'd meet, met. Because I once cared for you, Taronda. I will hunt down the demons and topple the Legion. He bared his teeth in a snarl. But I will never owe our people anything. She met his gaze this time. Emotions flickered over her face. Hope? Fear? Was that pity? Or regret? He was not sure, and he despised himself for placing so much value on what she thought. What she, f what she felt meant nothing to him. Nothing. Taronda said, Then le let us hurry back to the surface. The demon's corruption spreads with every second we waste. And that was it. All the greeting he was going to get after, all, after the long wasted millennia. No apologies. No remorse. She had helped cast him into this dreadful place. And now she needed his aid. And the worst of it was that he would give it. 
Bodies lay strewn outside his cell. It was clear that there had been a mighty battle out here, and that Taronda had fought her way in to free him. She must be desperate indeed to perform such an act. Looking down at the massive carcass of the keeper of the grove, he realized that if the Burning Legion had returned, she had reason to be. The Legion destroyed worlds the way armies destroyed cities. Did you slay him? Illidan asked, pointing at the dead body of Califax. I did, said Taronda. The keeper of the grove would not let you loose. Illidan laughed. My Ev will be angry. He was one of her favorites. Taronda's face flushed. This is not a reason for laughter, she said. I have had little enough cause for mirth in the thousands of years since you imprisoned me. Forgive me if my sense of humor seems a little warped. Ten thousand, she said. What? It has been more than ten thousand years since you were imprisoned. The laughter died on his lips. The weight of her words passed down on him like the weight of the earth above their heads. So long, he said, his voice soft. He looked at the ancient vault of his prison, traced the weave of the spells that had held him. He lengthened his stride, determined to leave this place and never come back. Why did you really set me free? He asked, still hoping that she might... You know, I, let me try this again, because I feel like I'm, I'm messing up at the voice a actor in this game. Let me see if I can actually try and do the voice from WoW. Why did you really set me free? That's, that's, that's my Liam O'Brien. Look, I've, I've heard a lot of what he's done, so... He asked, still hoping that she might show some shred of remorse about what she had done. As I said, the Burning Legion has returned. No one knows more about them than you. No one has slain more demons. You do not fear my treachery, then? Remember, I am called the Betrayer. Betrayer you were, but in the end you chose the right side. He gestured at his surroundings with one tattooed hand. And look at what it got me. You could be dead, like so many others of our people. Our people. You keep harping on about our people. They are not our people. They are your people. Do you hate us so? Yes, he said. His lip twisted into a sneer. But fortunately for you, I hate the demons more. She nodded as if he had confirmed something that she wanted to hear. A suspicion flickered through her, his mind. He had been imprisoned not from any, one f from any false act of mercy, but because she had known that one day he would again be needed. He had been stored here, like a weapon hung in an armory. Ahead he sensed a being of enormous and familiar power. His brother. He might have known that wherever Taronda was, her lover, Malfurion, his brother, which, again, which makes this whole love triangle quite awkward when the woman you love ends up marrying your brother. Awkward. Would be close by. Illidan's whole body tensed, prepared to spring into battle. His companion sensed it as well. She rushed forward and then halted, barred by the mighty presence of the archdruid Malfurion Stormrage. Illidan's brother was massive. Antlers protruded from his head. His handsome face held a look of dismay at seeing Illidan free. Clearly the archdruid had not come to aid Taronda. Four druids of the claw flanked Malfurion, each in the form of a bear. They flexed their claws and growled at Illidan. They had been set here to guard against his escape, and they seemed determined still to prevent it. Tur What's funny is here it says, Tyrannus said, Mal, which is funny because in the original Warcraft 3 she says, Furion, here they just cut the line out. They were just like, okay, just let's just cut that out, which I think works better. Illidan fought to keep his anger in check, 
Here was the brother who had condemned him. His words, when he found them, were bitter. It has been an, an eternity, brother. An eternity spent in darkness. Malfurion met his gaze evenly. You were sentenced to pay for your sins, nothing more. The hypocrisy of it was breathtaking. What sort of brother would condemn his own flesh and blood to ten thousand years entombed? And who were you to judge me? We fought the demons side by side, if you recall. Tension crackled in the air between them. In that moment, they were both ready to fight, to kill. Taronda shouted, Enough of this! Both of you! What is done is done. She focused the full force of her attention on Malfurion. My love, with Illidan's help, we will drive the demons back once again and save what is left of our beloved land. Malfurion shook his head. Have you even considered the cost, Taronda? This betrayer's aid may doom us all before the end. I will have nothing to do with this. Illidan schooled his face to impassivity. His own brother obviously still thought of him as nothing but a monster. A puppet for the Legion, he would, he would show him. He would show them all that the demons had no power over him. Cower in your weakness and indecision then, brother. But do so elsewhere, Illidan said. I have work to do, and little time to do it in. Illidan sent forth a burst of energy from the power he'd been steadily regaining, tossing those assembled around him into the stone walls. He strode past the dazed forms and out of his prison knowing in his heart that before this was over, he would be named Betrayer once more, and he would deserve it. He was never going to be imprisoned again. And that is the prelude to the Illidan book. The next chapter, you know, the next part is chapter one, which fast forwards two years to the events that we will see in The Frozen Throne, where he meets up with uh, Kael'thas and Lady Vosh in Outland and the events that happen there. But we will get to that another day. But there's the extra bit of info and context for the scene that you guys just saw. And now, the next mission. Ooh... Oh, this is such a good one. And it's really important in multiple ways. This, what happens in this mission is going to have huge ramifications going forward in the future. Chapter 6, A Destiny of Flame and Sorrow. The following evening, deep in the corrupted forests of Fellwood, a familiar face arrives. I am free after 10,000 years. Yet still my own brother thinks I am a villain. I'll show him my true power. I'll show him that the demons have no hold over me. Are you certain of that, Demon Hunter? Are you certain your will is your own? You reek of death, human. You'll regret approaching me. Come then. You'll find that we're evenly matched. <laughs> We could go on fighting like this forever. What is it you truly want? The Dreadlord who commands this undead army is called Tychondrius. He controls a powerful warlock artifact called the Skull of Gul'dan. It is responsible for corrupting these forests. And you wish for me to steal it? Why? Let's just say that I have no love for Tychondrius and the lord I serve would benefit from the Legion's downfall. Indeed he would. Why should I believe anything you say, little human? My master sees all, Demon Hunter. He knows that you've sought power your whole life. Now it lies within your grasp. Seize it, and your enemies will be undone. So, yeah. Now we get to control Illidan and some Night Elf forces. 
obviously this mission has some very, you know, a, a lot of importance to what happens later on. This is an extremely important moment right here. Um, I will talk a bit more about this when we return as uh, we go through this. Um, let me just address something real quick, though. It's easy to understand what... Uh, why Arthas would know what a demon hunter is. Obviously, the Lich King would know about what a demon hunter is and would simply just tell Arthas about that. The question people have is, how did Illidan know he was a human? Because sh why should he, he actually know what a human is? The only thing I can think of without the, uh, just simply saying it's a plot hole is that the fact that we now have confirmation in that book that I just read that... Illidan received visitors, including Maiev. It is possible that Maiev was actually informing Illidan about things happening, possibly to just torment him or taunt him. Like, so let me tell you about what I found out today, Illidan. I found out there are these things called humans. You know, it, it's just something I could see Maiev doing. Like, telling him all about this stuff, thinking he's never going to even get to see it or experience it, just to mess with him. Because that's just how messed up Maiev is. She doesn't just want to keep him in prison, she wants to taunt him the whole time. Torment him. But we'll discuss more about Maiev later. But that's just my own little, you know, theory as to how did Illidan know what, you know, that Arthas was a human... Maiev simply told him what a human is. Because I don't know of any other way that Illidan would actually know what a human is. So, anyways. When we return, we will be having Illidan obtain the skull of Gul'dan. For better or for worse. Stay tuned. <laughs> 